We are finally doing it. We're gonna get started on the leaf spring, the independent front suspension swap on the Everest. Got a lot of teardown work to do here today. We're gonna try and get it stripped down to just the tunnel and the belly pan. Um, start taking some measurements, seeing if we can get the uh, trailing arm mounts where they need to go today and kind of just see how far we get. It's the beginning of August right now and we're gonna try and have this done for the season this year. Um, I think that's a pretty achievable goal. I have all the parts here that I need. It's just gonna be a matter of doing the fabrication and getting the geometry correct, um, swapping over to the trailing arms and trying to figure out what length shocks I should go with. I have a couple different setups here off of different ZX chassis that I can use. So uh, we'll just figure that out along the way. So let's get to ripping and tearing. Uh, we'll have to get it down to just the bare bones chassis and then kind of decide what we're going to do from there. I don't really have a plan going forward. We're just going to figure it out as we go here and uh, have fun with it. So we're stripped down to pretty much just the bare belly pan there now. I'm um, still going to drop the skis out and get the old steering linkage out of there. It's all pretty worn out. All the heim joints are pretty much done. Uh, I'm going to try and use um, everything out of the Renegade donor sled for the steering linkage, see if I can get that to work. Um, if I have to refresh some of this stuff, order some new joints for it, I can do that. Uh, but we'll just have to see how it works out. So uh, let's get those skis dropped and then we'll look at probably doing some measuring and trying to make our first cuts there. Um, I'm going to leave the skid and everything in place for now until I get everything welded up on the front. Um, and then once I'm all done with all that, we'll probably strip everything down so it's just the tunnel and the belly pan and then uh, give everything a good coat of paint. Well, not the tunnel, but uh, the belly pan anyway. We'll strip that all the way down and try and take care of some of the rust issues that are there yet and get that cleaned up and get it looking good. So let's take a closer look at the front end. So I don't know how well you can see this, but um, everything up front here is pretty well shot, which is, I mean, we weren't planning on using any of that anyway. I just think it's kind of hilarious how sloppy this is and the beating that it must have taken over the years to get that bad. But um, yeah, so we're going to pull out these linkages and then i got to measure in from the ends here. This is all pretty symmetrical. Um, I just have to make sure that when I weld in the new shock towers that I'm not going to be um, having any clearance issues with the engine or the primary on this side. This side's going to be pretty open. All I really have to worry about is the exhaust pipe over there, which we can mess around with that if we have to to get uh, our clearances right and everything. So. I'm really more concerned with that side. I guess let's get uh, the rest of the steering linkages out of here and then we'll start measuring some stuff.
just got done pulling off the old trailing arm mounts off the Renegade chassis and just trying to figure out now the distance um, between the front shock mount and um, where I'm going to have to put the trailing arm mounts back here and looks like I'm actually going to have to cut out uh, like the foot well here. Um, it's riveted in on the outside but the inside it's actually welded so I'm going to have to cut that out and then I guess I'll probably just take the measurement between those two points there and um, I don't know if I'm actually going to weld in the shock tower and then put that in place to get a rough idea of where it's got to go back here or if I'm just going to use a tape measure measurement. Um, I think first thing I got to do is really just get this foot well out of here so let's get that cut out. Alright, so with the boot well all cleared out, I should have plenty of space to get that fit in there, um, but I am going to have to cut the hole in the side of the belly pan first before I can actually fit it in there properly. So now here comes the measuring part that I'm more than likely going to screw up and have to redo a couple times. So let's take a crack at that and see if we can get it at least relatively close. So center to center there looks like we have about 30 and a half inches. Check that one more time. Yep, 30 and a half. So then the only difficult part about getting that laid out is that the shock tower itself is going to be canted forward just a little bit just to get the angle right from the top mount uh, to the mount on the trailing arm itself. So this isn't going to be an exact process and it's probably not going to end, out, end up being exactly perfect but we're going to get it as close as we can. But even with that piece canted forward, the bottom mount, yeah, that shouldn't matter too much, so I'm kind of just talking to myself here. So 30 and a half inches would put us right about there. So I guess what I'm going to do is just mark out on the belly pan where I think the center point should be. And then we'll kind of throw up the trailing arm here and see if that puts us in about the right place or if we have to move it forward or back from there. There's 30 and a half. So this might actually kind of screw up the placement of our boot well, but. I'm really not too worried about that because I don't even really need that there. Um, I'm going to ride this standing up most of the time anyway. So as long as we put some some kind of bracing back there between the belly pan and the tunnel will be fine. It doesn't even have to be that, that footrest there. But um, Alright, so like that. Right about here. And that actually does look look pretty good. So I think that's what we're going to try and go with right there. Yeah, the hardest part is just going to be getting this exactly the same on the opposite side. But we'll, uh, we'll just do what we can. It's not going to be any worse than it was, that's for damn sure. So uh, I was going to drill that with a hole saw, but I'm thinking a step bit's probably going to be better. But I guess let's try and drill it. So I think I've mentioned it already too, my goal here is to just kind of get one side done and then just replicate it on the opposite side because at that point I'll have different uh, points on the belly pan and on the chassis in general that I can measure off of and get everything at least visibly close to symmetrical or symmetric, symmetrical, symmetric, I don't know, the same.
Well, I'm still gonna have to modify this just a little bit. I'm just gonna have to cut some of this bracing off around the outside here. Not that big of a deal. Uh, just to get it to fit properly, but I'm gonna go ahead and try and take care of that right now. And then we'll see if we can get that to fit in there just a little bit better. All right, so we got her to fit. Uh, sticks out a little bit further than is ideal, but we're just gonna live with that. Um, I think what we might end up doing, so I also, also made a little bit of a mistake when I drilled this hole. I drilled it up a little bit too high. Um, so the bracket itself wasn't sitting flush with the bottom of the belly pan. So you can see there, kind of had to open that up a little bit so that could slide down. Um, so on the other side, obviously I'm gonna try to avoid doing that, but I think because this sticks out so far, uh, what I'm gonna end up doing is making something that is gonna slip over this and I might even open up the hole large enough that I can slip it all the way back in. Um, just to give it a little bit more support or maybe I'll even like weld in a gusset down here or something like that um, Ideally that would have been you know, this would have been flush with the edge of the tunnel and I mean If you have the tools and know-how and the time you could probably cut this off and then I don't know maybe you'd be able to redrill it and tap it and Well, I don't even know if you could do that because this is a different diameter. It'd be a lot of screwing around, but I'm sure you could do it. I'm just going to try and run with this and make it work, but I do feel like I should probably put some kind of bracing, um, you know, in between the belly pan and here. I mean, this isn't really even structural. It is, but it's not. Uh, I think as long as we have enough bolts and everything, and I'm going to use bolts instead of rivets. I think it's just going to work better for me. Um, but I have plenty of anchor points in here yet where I can attach this to the belly pan and the tunnel itself So I think in the long run it's still going to be as stable as it needs to be and with where this is positioned at I should still be able to get um, get that uh, Footrest boot well, whatever you want to call it back in here um, Not in the exact same spot because this is going to be a little bit in the way, but um, I'll be able to get something in there anyway, just keep the snow out, but like I said, it really doesn't matter because I'm not going to be riding with my feet up there anyway, so. Um, so, what this is going to allow us to do now is just get that trailing arm on there and then get a better idea of the angle that we need to mount that, or weld that uh, front shock tower in at. So, this is just going to sit here for now, we're not going to worry about bolting it in or anything like that. It's plenty, of, plenty stable in there, tight enough, whatever you want to call it. So let's move on to the front and see if we can get that shock tower cut and welded in there. I ended up having to cut off an additional like two inches there off of that cross member. Didn't really want to do that, um, but that is it right about where I originally thought I'd have to cut it. Just didn't want to take that much off on the opposite side because we're so close to the primary there when the engine's in place. But I think it's going to be, and I probably said this a couple times already, but I think it's going to be canted forward enough that it's hopefully going to clear. And if it doesn't, uh, once we get over on that side, we'll just brainstorm and try and figure out what we're going to do. But I think we'll be able to make it work. So um, I got um, the piece of flat bar cut for the tower sitting over there. I'm um, going to go ahead and weld the shock mount on there. And then um, once that's done, we'll come back over here and weld it in place. And then we'll kind of get this side mounted up and we'll get... Um, Probably the best best shot of how it's going to look that we've ever had so far, but uh, Then at that point, I think I'm going to be ready to go on over to the opposite side and then try and mirror what we have set up over here and then once I get Everything kind of done with the shock tower and the trailing arm mount back there Then I'll have to worry about radius rods and stuff But that I think is going to be a little bit easier just because this is all open up here And I don't really have to worry about clearance with anything too much, but um, I guess let's get some welding done. Well, there she is, all wrapped up. Let's go riding. <laughs> oh, if only it were that easy. But yeah, I don't know. I think that looks pretty good. Just as a preliminary setup, I had to throw the hood on there and see how it looked and everything. And that ski's just sitting on the ground. But um, 
I'm like the most impatient person you'll ever talk to, so I had to get an idea of what it was going to look like when it's all done, but let's take a little bit of a closer look at my handiwork there. Naturally my camera battery died, so I didn't get to film welding this in place, but you guys didn't miss much. You know, flux core and dirty metal, that always goes over well. Um, yeah, feel free to drag me in the comments. I know they don't look great, but they should hold. Obviously I'm going to put a lot more bracing in here too. Um, it's going to be interesting getting everything to fit in here. Just exhaust pipe wise, I think I'm going to end up having to get a tuned pipe off of like an Escapade or something that had this same uh, 503 in it. Just a different exhaust pipe setup. But that shouldn't be a big deal. Um, definitely more work to do here yet, but you kind of get an idea of what it looks like. Well, I guess I'm going to go ahead and knock out the other side. Just going to be a mirror image of this side, so I will check back in with you guys when I'm all done. Well, I think that's looking pretty good. Got a righteous strap down there doing the Lord's work right now. I think in the next video we're going to work on doing the radius rods and getting the steering linkages taken care of. But, you know, I can't make you guys wait all that long to get an idea of what she was going to look like. So if you watched any of the previous videos where I was doing the uh, rear skid swap, I had talked about my intentions for the front end here and how this increase in ride height on the front was going to jack with the geometry of the rear. And you can see that there right now, how the front of the skid is up off the ground so far. So I'm either going to have to make drop brackets for the front mount of the skid and drop it down about three inches. Otherwise I did make these long enough back here that I could tuck the back of the skid further up into the tunnel. And if you have an opinion doing it one way or the other, either bringing the back up or the front down, let me know what you think and, and why. Um, I really kind of want to keep the ride height, so I'm thinking about dropping the front. I don't really know if that's going to have any negative impacts or you know what that's going to do for the ride quality. The only thing that I can think of is by dropping the front all it's going to do is increase the angle of attack on the track, so I'm going to trench more, I would think. But, I don't know. So, if you have an opinion, let me know. Let me know what you think the the right way to do it would be. Otherwise, I'm probably going to end up... I mean, I could always just drill the holes in the back, raise the back up, see how that rides, and then I can always just make drop brackets for the front either. It's not going to be too difficult to go from one to the other, so... I um, could always just try both and see how it works out, but... I don't know. I'm pretty happy with the way this is turning out so far. I think it's looking pretty good. Got a lot of work ahead of me yet, but it uh, should go pretty quick and I don't know, I'm having fun doing it. So it's all that matters, I guess. But I think I'm going to stop this one here. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Again, if you have any suggestions for what, what to do with the back there, or, um, as you watch what I did up front there, if you have any suggestions as to how I can uh, improve that at all, um, other than, you know, how shitty my welds are, <laughs> um, just drop a comment, let me know. So I will definitely be working on this between now and the time the snow flies, but I think we're going to cut this one off here. I'll get this edited, tossed up on the channel, and I think I'm going to go start thinking about how I'm going to tackle the uh, radius rod mounts and the steering linkages. I'll let that drive me nuts for a little while, but uh, thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Rolling up over black Cadillac High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats Baby's bad, oh baby's hella bad After her there ain't no coming back Wanna take a run at that